Hello, CARVE crew. My name is Christine Davidson, and I am a CSI Level 4 Ski Instructor, a yoga teacher, and a peak performance coach. And of course, I'm a huge fan of the CARVE system. I'm currently using CARVE. I've just started experimenting with all of its applications uh, so that I can improve my own skiing. But also, I am so excited about everything that I can do with CARVE to help my students who this season due to COVID might not be able to get to, uh, to Vernon, British Columbia, where I'm currently situated to ski with me. So I wanna share with you today, a short 10 minute yoga for skier specific practice. I wanna tell you a little bit, first of all, about the philosophy of yoga. That's really important when it comes to skiers practicing yoga. There's a big misconception in the West that yoga is about flexibility. And I'm sure you've seen tons of pictures and videos of these very beautiful um, people doing these crazy pretzel poses. Please rest assured that is not what I am into. It actually is not beneficial for skiers. When I was developing my practice, I realized that I needed to use more muscular effort and less hanging on the joint style flexibility in order for yoga to be of benefit to me as a skier. So my philosophy on yoga and how I think it's best applied to improving skiing is to use the right amount of muscular engagement to stabilize the joints and use breath to increase the pliability of the tissue. So there is an ancient Sanskrit saying, sitram sukham asanam, which means this yoga pose should be stable and comfortable. Notice how it has nothing to do with flexibility. So in this practice, you're gonna learn four specific postures that are gonna help you create optimal balance in the hip joint through working the hip flexors, the lateral glutes, the hamstrings, and the adductor muscles. I hope you really enjoy it. And if you're interested in learning more about where you can ski with me, where you can practice yoga with me, or other yoga videos that I'm gonna be releasing throughout the year, you can visit my website, www.flowcoachchristine.com. Now I hope you have a phenomenal season and I hope you enjoy this yoga practice. And welcome to your practice. Let's begin. Start on your back and draw your right knee up to your chest to begin drawing circles with your knee in the air. Start small to begin, keeping your breath easy and your core engaged to anchor the back of your pelvis to the mat. As you change directions, you can experiment starting to make the rotations bigger. And this gentle joint action, it seems like you're not doing much, but this is awesome for the health of your hip joint as it helps move synovial fluid, bringing oxygen and nutrients to the tissue. Now switching left knee up to chest and slowly drawing circles in the air with your left knee. You may notice the pelvis wants to twist as much as possible. Aim to keep the pelvis quiet and isolate this rotational movement just to the femur in the hip socket. And again, changing directions, perhaps drawing bigger circles in the air. Keeping the foot relaxed, the breath easy, and replacing your left leg down on the mat. Roll to your side and press yourself up to make your way into an all fours position with your wrists directly under your shoulders, your knees directly under your hips, 
and start to drop your pelvis to the left side of the mat. Now to the right side of the mat and returning to neutral. And we continue to move this very gentle, simple dropping of the pelvis to the side of the mat to stretch the lateral glutes. This also brings a really nice rotation into the spine. Now curling your toes under, lifting the pelvis and stretching it towards the back of the mat as you anchor your hands down into the mat. Looking forward, shift your weight into your left hand, left foot, and then draw the right foot up to meet your left hand as you lower your left knee down and draw your torso upright. Please make sure the right knee does not extend past the right ankle. And engage your abdominals to lift the chest without dropping into the lumbar spine. You can go deeper by extending your arms behind you, interlacing your fingers, and lifting the chest to get a deeper stretch in the front of the left hip. One more big breath, and as you exhale, placing hands down to draw the left foot up and turn the toes out, coming into a standing splits pose. Draw your right hip bone back, left hip bone forward, and as you exhale, forward tilt the pelvis. Be careful not to hyperextend the right knee and maintain this forward alignment of the hip bones as you gently fold over the front right leg. This will create a stretch the whole length of the back side of the right leg. If you want to, you can go deeper into your forward fold, but you really don't have to. Our aim is to engage the muscles of the legs, creating strength and stability as we bring a moderate amount of stretch. And placing your hands down, draw your right knee underneath your chest, right toes flat against the mat. Turn your torso diagonally to the front left corner of your mat, and then slowly roll your hips back and away. If you want to go deeper, you can move into full pigeon pose by creating an alignment with the front left shin that's more perpendicular to the yoga mat. And then drawing your forehead down to your folded hands, you may experience a powerful stretch in the right hip. And these muscles are so important for skiers. And we pause here for just a couple cycles of breath, activating the muscles around the pelvis to draw the right hip bone back, left hip bone forward, flexing the right ankle, and being active to push the right big toe away from your center. And coming out of the pose, we just roll onto the right hip to release the left leg. And we come into a seated position where we draw the soles of the feet together. Allow your knees to fall towards the mat. And with your inhale, lengthen. With your exhale, you can start to forward fold, hinging in the hips, but making sure that you don't overly round your spine. If it's very difficult to maintain this posture, if the knees are high up and away from the mat, feel free to do a much more mild version of this pose. And you can try sitting up on a pillow, a folded blanket, or a block to make it easier for you to move into a forward fold. This is a great stretch for the inner thighs and the groin muscles 
the adductors are so important in skiing to help us churn with our legs and balance predominantly on the outside leg. And coming into all fours, this time facing the back side of your mat, curling toes under and extending your pelvis up and back. Straightening your knees only to your capacity. No need to go deep into this one. The aim is to have a gentle stretch in the hamstrings. Now shifting your weight to the right hand, draw your left foot forward and right knee down. And once again, we're in the low lunge position, this time left leg forward. Making sure you activate, lifting up with the chest and dropping your tailbone as you lift the front of the pelvis and extending arms behind you, interlacing fingers. Straighten the arms and lift your chest, looking up towards the ceiling. Now as you replace your hands to the mat, lifting the right knee and drawing the right foot so that the toes point slightly outwards. Coming up into a standing position, drawing your left hip bone back, right hip bone forward, and then hinging in the hips to bring the torso forward and over the left leg. With your hands on your hip bones, you can guide your pelvis into a neutral alignment, preventing a rotation or twisting so that we have an even stretch on the inner and outer sides of the front left hamstrings. Now, if you want to go deeper, you can certainly bring your hands down, but only if it does not compromise the alignment of the pelvis. And now placing hands down to come into pigeon pose, left leg forward. Now the green circle version, you have your shin on the mat, toenails on the mat, and you create a stretch by turning your torso on the diagonal and lowering your left hip down towards the mat. If you have knee issues, I recommend staying in that one. If it's safe to do so, you can go deeper into full pigeon pose. Making sure your left ankle is flexed and pushing the big toe side of your left foot away from you will help align the lower leg bone with the upper leg bone, protecting the knee as you move into a forward fold, resting your forehead on your hands. Now the more conservative the angle at the knee, the more gentle the stretch, the closer to parallel with the front edge of the mat the shin bone is the more intense it becomes. Please choose your own adventure here. Now with your inhale, lifting the torso, placing the hands, and then roll onto the left hip to release the leg. Once again, coming onto your back, hugging knees to chest, and just dropping the knees to the right edge of your mat as you turn and gaze at your left hand. Just a gentle, spinal twist to wind down our practice. And then switching, rolling the knees to the left edge of your mat as you turn and gaze at the right hand. Breathing deeply. And to your capacity, maintaining both shoulder blades on the back. As we take one more squeeze of the knees, we can roll onto the left hip and make our way back into a comfortable cross-legged position. Namaste and thank you for joining me in this 10-minute morning hip practice for skiers. Have an awesome day out there, everyone.